Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, I just wanted to do a, a quick blog today uh, about our scripture reading for the day. Today we're reading in Genesis chapter 37 and we read about Joseph and his dreams and his brothers not liking his dreams. And we read about Joseph's brothers, you know, thinking about killing him and throwing him in a pit and then eventually selling him to some Ishmaelite or uh, Midianite traders. And um, then they come back to their father who loved Joseph. He was the favorite son. And they come back to his father and they, they had brought his robe and they had covered it with, um, with the blood of an animal and brought it to his father to pretend like Joseph had been attacked by an animal when actually they had sold him off into slavery. And so what caught me today was the response of, of Joseph's father. Um, and so uh, as they sold Joseph off into slavery, Jacob didn't take that. He didn't take that well. And so it says, um, when they brought him the robe and, and showed it to him, it says their father recognized in verse uh, 37, Chapter 37, 33. The father recognized it immediately. Yes, he said, it is my son's robe. A wild animal must have eaten him. Joseph has clearly been torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his clothes and dressed himself in burlap. He mourned deeply for his son for a long time. His family try, all tried to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. I will go to my grave mourning for my son he would say, and then he would weep. You know, this is such a sad passage of scripture. Um, it, it's sad uh, in, in a lot of ways. You know, the, the verse goes on to say, you know, Joseph wasn't dead. He had been sold to, um, he had been sold to Potiphar, um, uh, the Pharaoh, an officer of the Pharaoh, in Egypt and so he became a servant and and you know as a story plays out we'll see that that was actually a good thing but as Jacob um, gets the word that and he thinks his son is dead he goes into a deep place of mourning that no one can pull him out of when they tried to encourage him he he says no don't he refused to be encouraged and he says I'm gonna go to my grave mourning for my son you know, uh, I think this verse jumped out to me this week because uh, there's been just a lot of, of mourning out there this week. Um, in uh, you know, to, to me, I'm a sports fan, and uh, you know, so uh, a lot of friends that are sports fans. And then you know, if I get a chance to watch TV, it'll probably be you know sports. And um, the sports world has really been mourning the death of Kobe Bryant this week. Uh, a lot of people have taken time, lots, a lot of sports writers, a lot of announcers, a lot of analysts um, have taken time this week to just talk about how, how they're dealing with it, how they're mourning, how they're grieving. Um, after I put the kids to bed earlier this week, one night, um, I went to put on the end of a game to fall asleep and watch it, and, and uh, a, the, the announcers were talking about you know about Kobe and the game had just ended and then they actually devoted a long period of time to just talking about who he was and and uh, just all of them individually pouring out their heart and grief over his loss giving them a place of deep reflection and, and thinking about that and, and I've, I'm you know in my day I don't think I've ever seen uh, a country or you know or so many people grieve the the loss of a sports figure you know, part of it is because it's tragic. You know, he was only 41 years old and, and uh, you know, a helicopter pilot and his daughter um, and a bunch of his friends were on the, on the helicopter with him. I'm sure that's part of it. Part of it was because he was very likely the, the greatest, you know, basketball player of the last 20 years. You know, uh, uh, LeBron James has taken that, uh, you know, title now, but just before him, LeBron, uh, Kobe was the dominant player in the NBA, the greatest player who was playing for a couple decades. And uh, so, you know, that makes it super real. Um, 
And so I see all this grief and, and I recognize that, you know, grief is a real thing and, and we are all supposed to grieve because when we lose somebody we love, we're supposed to grieve. But I, I uh, also know that the Bible has a way to grieve um, that, that the world doesn't know. And so I'm seeing a lot of grief where people have hope, but I'm seeing a lot of grief where people just are at a loss and they have no hope. So as we look at Jacob refusing to be comforted, I want to jump to the New Testament um, in the book of 1 Thessalonians where the Apostle Paul teaches us how to be comforted when we're in a time of grief, when we're in a time of, of loss to um, when, when, when it, you know, we're in a situation, you know, a tragedy, a tragic situation like Joseph being you know, killed by an animal or Kobe Bryant's helicopter crashing and him and his daughter and their friends being, you know, killed. Um, the, but the Bible has a way for us to grieve when we feel like we're, we're hopeless. And so check this out. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. See, there's there's a way to grieve with no hope, and there's a way to grieve with hope. And grief without hope um, is not a place you ever want to be. It's a place where you just long to die, and um, you don't see you don't see any hope. You don't see the God's purpose for your current life, and and moving on. You don't thank God for the time you have a person. You you're angry that you don't have the person, and you're just kind of at a loss. Yeah, uh, there's this numbness. Now all grieving has pain. Um, and and when you love somebody, everybody goes through grief, but there's grief with hope, and that's what the Apostle Paul introduces us to. He says this. So, uh. I want you to know what happens to believers who have died so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when he re when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on this earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. And then it goes on to say, um, so encourage one another with these words and so today i just want to encourage you with these words you know uh jo jacob didn't take the encouragement and a lot of people today are not taking the uh taking the encouragement but but god has a plan for your future so make sure you're in christ make sure you're believing in the hope of the gospel and uh make sure you're looking forward to that day that you're looking forward to that day that you'll spend eternity with christ in in paradise and so hey thanks for listening today um god bless you and keep growing